Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today I'm so excited about what we are going to be learning. It's going to be very simple, but trust me, full of information that will blow your mind. And the beautiful part is that we are getting a free color lookup at the end of the class. So all you need to do is watch the video to the end and also make sure you join our WhatsApp community, which is where we are going to be dropping the color lookup we are using in this particular one so that you can as well use it on your light skin models or images and get amazing results. So this is the look we are going for. This is the finished work we are going for. Trust me, this is very simple. You wouldn't have to stress so much. And we are using just actions, just basic actions, no plugins, just basic actions. So welcome back or welcome to this particular one. Let's quickly get started. So I'm going to move back to the original image. The first thing I want to do in this particular one is to take care of the blemishes. And to do that, it's very, very simple. All we need to do is to pick up our spots removal tool and just tab around the image. Very simple. All right, so once I don't take care of your blemishes, which I believe I am done with, with the ones I want to remove right now, then I'll go straight to my actions. Yeah, and of course, if you watched our previous video on this particular channel, the previous skill retouching tutorial we did, we gave out this action for free so you might as well do well to go watch the video and get access to the action so that you can follow us along as we retouch so the first thing i want to apply is my frequency separation listen this is the technique we are using in this particular one is one of the best frequency separation techniques you will find out there do not miss this i promise you this will blow your mind so i'm keeping it at three because the image is not quite a high res image so I'll open up my frequency separation. Now, if you look at the setup, you notice that it's slightly different from the regular frequency separation that you just have three, that you just have basically two layers and one in the middle for uh, tone correction. So what we're going to be doing in this house is that we're going to load up an empty layer right in the middle. Make sure that we we'll pick up our mixer brush too. My wetness is in 35 and my flow is in 31, which is all we need. But there is a difference in this one now. This is where the tweak comes in. You have to make sure that your sample all layers is turned on. Because for us to be able to work on these correcting tones, which is our empty layer, we need to make sure that our sample all layers is on. Because if we say sample current layer, which is turning off the sample all layers, there is nothing in this layer, it's an empty layer. So it's going to just be sampling an empty layer, so we will not have anything occurring on our image. But once we turn on sample all layers, is going to sample all the layers that are open. And now to control the results you get when all your layers, when you are using sample all layers, you have to turn off your high frequency, which is your texture. Now remember, frequency separation is simply retaining your texture while working on your color. Now I want you to sample all open layers, which is going to be just the color because we already turned off our high frequency. Don't bother about this one here. This is clipped on this. So the moment we turn this off, this is automatically turned off as well. So what that simply means is that it's sampling from this layers, everything downwards, which is still the colors we are working with. So we'll zoom in. Very simple. Blend, paint, and polish. Very simple. So I'm just working on this once. So you notice that I'm not doing so much because this is highly destructive, very, very destructive. And because we are working on empty layer, we will even be able to know when we've covered the whole image because it's going to be appearing right here. But well, let's do a lot. You'll see what I'm talking about. So we'll spend a lot of time dwelling on this because I believe by now you already know that the, the most beautiful retouchings are the ones that are not too much done. The ones who don't do too much. I wouldn't want to fast forward this video. I want you to watch it hands on. So we'll do everything we can to keep it as short as possible. Right. So thus, make sure we are maintaining the whole place the way it is. So if you notice one thing, I'm increasing and reducing the size of my brush, depending on the area I want to paint part time. So you also need to know that you don't have to use the same size of brush on all the areas you end up flattening up your image if the area you are painting is big you make your brush big if it's small you make your brush small 
send post. So let me let's see we can't get a pick before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. You notice that we've not done so much. We are already getting very nice image, although the skin is not yet looking smooth because of the textures we retained. But if we didn't turn off that texture, man, it's going to mess up the roof. All right, so we're done with our frequency separation. Let me open it for you. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. So a few things I want to take care of now is some uh, skin textures that I do not really like that I'm seeing all over this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my uh, clone stamp. Make sure you are in your high frequency puppy, not in the main high frequency, your high frequency puppy. Zoom in a little and just start taking care of the blemishes. Of course, you need your clone stamp to be small, depending on the area you are removing it. Alright, so once you are done doing that, all the next thing you need to do is just to move in and do your dodging and burning. So I think we're almost good and done with this. Alright, so I'm going to collapse this. This is the before, this is the after. The next thing we need to do right now is our dodging and burning. And very simple to do that. I'll just come all the way down here, go to my dodge, load my dodge action, go to my bone, load my bone action. Then, of course, turn on my dodge and bone check layer. So, I'll click up my brush, put it at the flow of three, and start dodging my image. So, dodging while using this particular check, uh, check layer, you should know that wherever is dark is where you should dodge, and wherever is bright is where you should burn. Don't know why it's said to be inverted that way, but it works really well. So just burn this, dodge the areas rather, very important. Dodge the nose, this area, dodge this area as well. Yeah, bring the same thing for the cheat. Just dodge these areas. So you notice that I'm not even zooming in so tight because what I'm doing is a global color gradient, global dodging and burning, not micro dodge and burn. So I'll of course dodge these areas that have some shades of black in it. Put the same thing burn. So I noticed this area is quite dark, which means it needs quite a highlight. So it does darken it more than every other area. Then darken these areas, which is the same thing as dodge them. So it does give them a very nice dodging. Do the same thing here. Come over to this side, repeat the same thing. All right, so we'll come over to the neck. I like the way this area is shining. So we'll just make it shine more. Beautiful. Okay, so move over to the bone. Of course, opposite of what we did with the dodge. All these areas that are bright, just need them slightly brighter. Do the same thing, do the same thing, do the same thing over here. Cut this area, make it very much darker. So I'm just maintaining the way the light is flowing on the image. So once I turn off my check layer, you'll see that we've done quite a lot. So this is the before. Let me group them all inside one group. All right, so this is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. You notice that our image is already having some glamour. But to make things even more glossy and more poppy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, within the same layer, create a pause adjustment layer, then brighten it up quite a lot. Press Ctrl I, pick up my brush. Now I'm painting at flow 100 and make sure it's a tiny hard brush. Make sure it's a tiny hard brush to make your brush hard, just go over here. And increase your hardness very soon. So you just draw a straight line across those highlights. Like this. So if you want it to be more sharp, of course, turn it down. Make it slimmer so the highlights can be stronger. Do the same thing over here. Take it all the way up into this table. One more here. One more here. One more over here. I think this one needs to be quite smaller. One more over here. Do the same thing over here. Same thing here. For the face, same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing there. I got the nose like this. And once you are done drawing your line, ah, of course, we cannot miss this area. 
one way down, just like that. Beautiful. So once you are done drawing your line, go to the curves uh, icon, then go back to mask. It's going to load up your properties. Then just feather it. Keep feathering it. Yeah, I think I like it where it is. So if it's too high, it just flattens out. The effect is not there. If it's too low, it looks unrealistic. So just find the moment the line disappears, you stop. Good. I like it here. But I think the arm over here is still showing like a line. So I just do one more. Yeah, it's beautiful. So this is the before, this is the after. So you see that we actually added some shines using our dodging and burning. But the moment we introduced this one, it gave us this trick of lightening going through the image. And that is how you create that. Very simple. So the next thing we need to move up to now is our color grading. And we'll just get straight to it. So I'm going to flatten this up. Since we're not going to be using it again, then make a selection of my subject. So make a select inverse and minus the areas that you don't want in the selection. Maybe like the JS or something. Beautiful. Minus this areas. Very good. I think I want the head. No, not everything. Yeah, this is good. All right, so we are good. Make a duplicate of your background and cut out your image. So we'll have our image on a different layer, then we'll have our background on a different layer. So the first thing we need to start working on is our skin tone. And to do that, I'm going to use two color loopups, so I'm going to load it up. We are using two particular skin tones, which are this and this. So, but to make things look very beautiful, we need to make a separation of her skin from her main image so that we can just target the skin. So to do that, I'm going to make a duplicate of my main object. Then create a mask for it. Go to your select, go to color range. So once you are in your color range, you notice that it's already loaded. So the reason this came out like this is because I already selected it. So I'm going to select somewhere else, then pick her skin, go back to my plus icon and start adding the areas I want. So I would have just used that one, but I just needed to show you how this works. So the, all the white areas are the areas that are selected. All the black areas are the areas that are not selected. So you know exactly how that works. I think this area is not selected, so we just added it. You can decide to increase the fuzziness a little just to make the transition very smooth. Then press OK. Use this mask to replace the one of the color lookup. And immediately you start having that color grading just on the skin. So for this one, I'm going to put it at color. So I'm changing the blend mode to color. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can get this beautiful glossy shine in her skin. And it will also help us match the skin tones in case there are areas that are not properly matched. Of course, we need to reduce it. Then do the same thing for the color lookup. Now I will have to hold my alternate and duplicate this mask and open it up and boom, we'll have that beautiful color. So this one, I do not need to put it in any blend mode. I just need to reduce it. Beautiful. So let me match it up in a group so you could see the before, the after. So you just see within a few minutes or a few seconds, we are able to get it done. So I noticed that this area is not properly selected in my mask. So I'm going to manually paint that area in. Check out for any other area before you duplicate the mask again. All right, so once you are done, hold your alternate and duplicate the mask to also use and replace this one so everything can get down well. So the next thing we want to take care of is our backdrop. And to do that, I'm just going to smoothen it out by reloading my selection on the background. Then go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So I know you say it's already smooth here, but I'm seeing some JPEG artifacts on it, which I do not want. I just want it very smooth, then I'll press OK. Then I will load up a solid color to give it a very grayish look. That will mix a little bit of blues to restore somewhere around here. Yeah, press OK, change the blend mode to color. Very good. So we'll have that grayish kind of backdrop that still allows us to retain our shadows. Now I'm looking at the dress, I feel I should make the greens pop out a little bit and also adjust a little bit of the reds on the skin tone. Yeah, that singular move is going to fix that for me. So I'm going to come up here, not below here, up here, load up my hue and saturation, use my hand tool and pick the dress. Then I'll just move it around a little, reduce it a little, 
the basic tailings. So I, one thing you will notice is that my skin tone is also there. So it's also giving me some glamour and shine in the skin tone, which I like. So I'm going to leave everything at this. Now, the next thing I want to do is just to create a very beautiful gradient effect behind her so that we can have that beautiful separation from the background. Yeah, we can as well check for other blend modes that will make things look even better. I think I like what Overlay is doing, but it's not giving me the gray I want. It's all right, guys, let's stick with our color. So we'll just darken it down a bit too. Beautiful. So I'm going to create a gradient effect behind her. Make sure it's red here. Place it somewhere around here. Go to the colors and I'm being pure white color. And just a little tinting from her dress. And we need it quite bright as well. Yeah, I'll press OK. Press OK as well. Then we'll place it somewhere around her head area. Press OK. Use linear light or linear dodge. I think I like my linear dodge. Let's use our linear light because the colors of the back backlight is now tinting a little bit of her dress. So I'll just reduce that. Beautiful. So to crown it all together, before we do our last move of camera roll, we'll just create a photo cooling effect. Filter over here. Reduce the opacity. Yeah. Press Ctrl Shift Alternate E. And just go to your filter, go to your camera roll, and make the colors pop a little, and we are good. So I'll just, I'm just going to increase the vibrance a little bit and we are good to go. So let me show you all the before and the after. So I'm going to go to my history, make a snapshot. So this is the image when we came into Photoshop. This is what we are living with over here. Yeah, before I forget one last thing, we did not use our done for you. So I'm going to go to my done for you, load up my done for you retouch action. And just give it that final look. Uh, you know i always like to give to my images using my done for you so i'm just going to place it somewhere around two and press ok oh my this is beautiful this is beautiful though it's too much but it's beautiful so i'm just going to reduce the the barrel field somewhere around 40. nice and we are good thank you so much for watching make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you have not joined any of our WhatsApp community where you'll be getting this color look up for free, please do make sure you join by clicking the WhatsApp link in the uh, description of this video. And also make sure that your notification bell is turned on every single time you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified every time we drop new videos that you would love to watch. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you follow us now.